very strong aim. The problem is how, you know, how, how can you replicate that every single game, every single round? Uh, you need the brain to back that up, to put yourself into the right positions, uh, to back up your aim. Um, so, you know, every now and again, it does, he is a bit hit and miss. Um, Wong, I would say, is that consistent fragger for me. Probably the best player on the team, to be honest. Um, and then, obviously, you look at Impulse Game, you're looking at Nuki and uh, Ray Wan and potentially Sam Wan as well. But uh, pistol round, four kits, sorry, four sets of armor, one kit, and double flashbang, not a smoke, actually. Very interesting. Should have an idea for that, and they do. Look at the position here on, on A. Yeah, certainly glad they haven't opted for four kits. That would be a bit of a different CT side of this round, I think, for sure. But nonetheless, as you say, it's about time we kick things off for this first week as the clock already beginning to wind its way down. Barrage, well and truly with a game plan, one that is pretty much dead set on taking connector control and splitting out on towards A as they've lined themselves up with a push to come in from Palace as well. Cynic really going to be the man of the hour almost when it comes down to stopping this Palace push. Not only does he find the first, but he gets information on that second as Jammy there to help. Finds one of his own back on towards Peto, and it's all seeming relatively easy at this point. It's Impulse Gaming looking like they're just going to breeze over for Arch. Pretty much just take it right in their stride. Neto, the last man, 100 HP. Alex, how on earth is he going to worm his way out of this one? Yeah, I don't think he can. One versus four. Jammy James is low HP. I mean, fair play, try and take that $300. But uh, Nikki there, the falling headshot will take down Neto. 1 0 in favor of Barrage. I mean, that counter setup they had there. Maybe they've seen Barrage play Barrage before. Barrage play Mirage. Jesus. Maybe they've seen Barrage play Mirage before. That's why they went for the counter setup. But um, having that player there towards Firebox really did seal the deal. Cynic John finding that kill out of Palace. That meant there was no trade for the players that come up connector. Round's pretty much done there. But uh, very interesting to see two flashes on a kit there on Samuel playing towards B. It's very rare you see that. So uh, maybe he's expecting a B contact play. Chuck the flashes. I love the rotations to come in. Maybe it's that sort of play. But... Uh, Enough of that as the force fight comes in for the T side. Scout on Velox there. Very good of the scout. I forgot to mention that actually. Along with Dancy, he's probably the two of the best scout players I've seen. Gonna be going towards the A ramp and around mid as well. I think he is mid actually with that scout. So, oh no, it's ramp, sorry. Trying to play contact off of that scout. And against them will be three rifles and two SMGs. Only one and four on Nikki, so this could be quite a weak or maybe exploitable buy here for Barrage. Yeah, it certainly does leave a window opportunity and a bit of a sour taste in the mouth of the CTs when it comes down to almost saying they've got 100% shot at taking it. Instead, it looks like things could be a little bit more, well, harder to earn, should we say. The Tech Nines and Co are beginning to get themselves ready to push out towards Ramp. Neto up and towards Palace. Got his almost brother, brother from another mother, you can say, pushing out towards Ramp. Peto there with the Tech Nine in hand. And here we go, Tech 9 going to find one. Neto with the Deagle spamming on away as well. Cynic is going to find one in return, actually. just shutting down that original Tech 9 push. Neto picking up a double, actually, as he finds that pick onto a jammy, meaning this site is well oh. under control. Neto with just another, a triple kill from him now, solely down to the Deagle plays. His team not finding a single frag aside from that. Shank just 2 HP, such a small amount, but look at him, he's holding these angles. Samwell knows full well that he's got a Deagle coming his direction. He doesn't want to face into it, add all the nerves. We're starting to keep on in as they just do not want to handle this. Ray going to find one with the M4, at least trying to bat them back and trade these blows. There's another flash going out, gets to drop the bomb, and that's huge for the CT side now. They've regained control, and Velox has his work cut out for him, but goes in face first with a Glock and still wins the duel. Yep, at this point, you should try and get the bomb down. He's not got time. He though, yeah, he doesn't want to die. I know I know that he has got the time, but the money. The problem is, though, he anticipated a play at CT. He don't want to die after time, so fair play. Problem is, though, very, very good around there. Even the Barrage lost that round. They took four... Wait, did the, how did the last player lose his SMG? Did he drop it? Yeah, he did. Okay, so four players dying there, meaning four players having to reinvest. And uh, Sitting John... Actually, no, he will, he will buy up here. So again, two MP9s. Two Thamases and the MP7 as well. The Thamases are actually a lot harder to control than an M4 at range. It's so hard to spray with the Thamas. It goes left and right, then right, then left. It's so hard to do. I can't do it personally. That's why when you have them holding these long positions, it can get very tough. Well, they say practice makes perfect. It seems like Nuki is on the ball with that one as he finds himself a double kill. Fairly comfortably. Cynic going to find just another on the Fama spray as well. Coming up trumps right now for Impulse. They have lost two in the making though, which is a little bit rough and certainly paints them in a bit of a worse worse situation. But Cynic with just another one towards Neto eventually is going to close this round down. Barrage, one common trend for them has been this economic impact they've been able to have, of course, in this round. What they limited was uh, full by potential, but after time, that kind of economic impact does begin to fade away. Like going into this next round, we're still going to see fairly comfortable M4, still going to see a lot of this utility and AWP if they so choose. 
So it's not necessarily as impactful. The biggest thing is Barrage needing to respond in this round themselves now that they're on their own buy. And we get to see, most notably, Wong on his own AWP. Yeah, look at the buy though. So all the players are bought up and it's 3.8k on Slink John and 1.8k on Nuki. So one win here from Barrage could definitely alter the economy and potentially put them on eco. We could be seeing a 3-2 lead if they do take this one. Nuki held it for the short push. Good read here. Wong does fall. Now already 1 minute 13 o'clock. We see the man advantage in favour of Impulse. Very strange to see the jump through the smoke with no flashbang as well. So just going for the Hell Mary play, jumping through a smoke. Definitely very risky and the risk does not pay off. You have to give it to them in terms of the read as well, just to hold the angle with the AWP instead of going uh, for that aggressive mid peak. That's, well, that's, it's quite it's common. It's the simple things, yeah. but it's good. Oh, the it timing kind of, there. Yeah, getting away with it by the skin of his teeth. Gets to back off and decide, you know what, maybe I want to get myself back into jungle, go towards window. Would be nice to actually see him get in towards that window angle and just look back towards short, but also make sure ladder room isn't contested too hard. As, of course, we can see Velox is almost kind of toying with the idea of taking that fight. As Nuki is going to get tagged on down and eventually punished through the wooden fencing, meaning Neto gets himself not only one, but potential for just oh. a little bit more. But unfortunately, Ray is going to drop them all dead. Looks for the triple kill. Perhaps getting a bit too greedy with that one. Shanked and Pedo going to combine, taking control of the B site now with the bomb soon to follow. Two versus two on the cards now. They have time to work with the CTs. They don't need to rush into this retake. And they do have a whole lot of flashes. So certainly a blinding affair, but they're pushing out without using a single one of them. Use your utility, boys. As Jami is going to find one, but it pits Siddiq. You know, one versus one. Shanked just 28 HP. Cynic is holding an angle, being ever so patient in his approach. Doesn't want to overface this one. But Shanked is playing the time, and he's almost reading Cynic like a book. Yep. And there you have it. 3k there for Shanked, winning that with 6 HP. And the money on side of the CTs. One thing I have to force this. Buy an AWP, potentially on Cynic. AWP, no armor. Glass cannon towards a mid. Expect a face from the T's, potentially. Um, or you can buy an inform by four nades and actually believe they're gonna drop pistols. Wow, so they will be going for the save here This might actually be a double save unless someone wants to go to max seven towards B potentially and he is a B player So that's not the end of the world Shank they're dropping a souvenir fallout walling SG Krieger Actually a nice skin, but a uh, nice skin not quite a nice gun though. We saw uh, magic spoil Versus Hellraiser bring it out just you know a few hours ago at the major so maybe that's where the inspiration came from but nevertheless, it will be the full eco for Impost Gaming. And as I mentioned before, Barrage win that one round. And they're going to get a 3-1. Making it 3-2 to two here. And that buy coming up for Impost Gaming might actually be quite weak as well. So there's potential here for Barrage to take the lead if they do opt for going 4-3. to three. Five players still alive here. So the money is building for Barrage. And the SMG's landing kills as well. Even though the players don't have a lot of money at the moment. Once the bomb goes off and they grant you that 3,000. Oh, Velox here, might get caught off. God, there's a player behind him. Knife out. Okay, then someone does eventually take him down. So two kills here from the full eco of the CT side. And Ray One can actually save this SSG and drop that over to Samuel. Or someone can even keep the UMP here. So uh, not the end of the world for an eco here. But uh, yeah, the Krieger's out of the hands. Quite unfortunate, actually. Yeah, a bit disappointing. But as you mentioned, and it was this is actually a very, very big point. It's all about longevity for impulse when they come into, the, into this next buy. And... Unfortunately, they're still going to be licking their wounds, right? They're not going to have that you know, great, perfect buy. And it's going to be curious to see if they can even opt for an AWP and just taking a quick glance at their economy, the answer to that one has already flowed on through. It's going to be a no. So it's going to be rifles if they choose to invest anything at all in this round. And that's that's tough. Tough call it is. If they go for the eco, they can buy eight she nades here. They will go for the quasi buy. <sighs> they're going for the quasi buy, but they're not really doing anything with it. They're still playing a default with pistols. And uh, no armor there, just a deagle on Nuki. He will be buying the AWP into the next buy round with the AWP. Fast under pass aggression here from the T's. Towards mid. Velux there spotting out Nuki. Bolton comes in, he does fall. They need to have players stay alive here. They need to build their bank and build their economy. <laughs> nice shot there from Wong. And uh, did he re. Yeah, he must have rebought that. Did he rebuy that? Because Ray One took it off out of his hands. So uh, he's actually rebought that Krieger. So. Um, Potentially there's a game plan here. I'm trying to think. Uh, we saw Magic's Boy take it towards B apps and hold for the jump peak with it. Um, I'm trying to think, where else could you go with the Krieger? A contact, you know, the headshot angle when you're looking towards default, when you're pushing out ramp to T, that's not too bad. Maybe it's got, you know, a place in the meta, who knows. But um, what we do now now is the buy from the CT side. Or from Nuki, we'll go towards mid. Is he going to play aggressive or is he going to just keep it safe how he has been playing before? Just play for the information. Knows they can't go short, but gives the information to his teammate that they can go connector. 
or will he go for that mid peak? Will he try and peek towards connector and get them as they push out mid? I think the big thing is just seeing something different, right? We don't want to see them just play like, you know, the same old style. We see that's the problem with the Fuzzy Bear, right? They just try to do the same old, same old and Braj. They're happy <laughs> to just run into this. They're getting all of the fights and they're all favoring them. Look at Wong just pushing. No He's way. being an absolute monster with this. Gets himself a double kill. Easy headshots. He having the time of his life. Ray is going to respond. Gets himself a pick and, you know, fairness to them. Look at the amount of damage that's been done to the side of Braj. But to be honest, Snods, getting to 3 HP, getting himself to 1 HP. Nobody cares. It's still Samuel and Ray left in a two versus four. They're still pushing it out. They aren't able to find a pick on towards Velox. He's going to find a headshot on towards Samuel, and every single piece is falling into place. Barrage off the back of what feels like just an SSG and Velox as well, and making it work. This is ridiculous. I know. I mean, no nades, just a simple contact play. I don't want to say scrim out a ramp. It wasn't as really a scrimmy play. Just pushed out. Thing is, as well, right? If you make that call, and you know that Impulse gave me four sport, and you know they won't have Molotovs, they won't have smokes, well not really smokes, but you know they won't have Molotovs or flashes as counter nades, fair play, I do like that call. The fact that you know they went for a quasi buy when, you know, they had the four round bonus means these guys, they have mollies, they have flashbangs as the counter nades, yet you still go them. for that, yeah, I, I, it <laughs> works, it me. worked, but sometimes, you know, what works sometimes isn't the right call. I mean, is that repeatable versus potentially another team? I don't know. The fact that Impulse Gaming there definitely caught with their trousers down and uh, Wong. Yeah. So I, I love your trailer of thought on that, right? Because as much as it may be a bit rough to say, okay, it works, but is that the right play? I think the biggest thing is instead of looking if, if that's the right play or not and whether it's repeatable, it's just to look to the fact that they were able to pick up a round and look at kind of what they bought themselves. They bought themselves time to play with. Because you know, one thing we mentioned right at the start, right, was that we didn't want to see Impulse Gaming get six, you know, six rounds in a row back to back and get that early momentum. So Barrage off this freak, off of these headshots they're finding, keeping it clean now and doing almost a bit of an opposite affair. They're at four to three. Impulse haven't been able to do anything at all in this round either. We're looking at Nuki almost fighting for survival with a P250 in his back pocket. Ray will be the, really the only man who can even pretend to have an impact. And that's whether he is able to even find one angle. And well, he's not. He Velox is just going to pop off and gets a double kill. So it's all you know standard outcomes. And I think Barrage just feeling like they can do anything they want, feeling like they can run anywhere in the map and they're winning all of these duels. It's huge for them right now because Impulse Gaming, they're not responding. They're not being proactive with their utility. They're not being proactive with their setups. They're still doing the same old default style that they played in that quasi play. Bum, it's got a kick. Yeah, for sure. Still, though, full utility now for the CT side. Just Nuki with that Molotov and an H sheet. Doesn't really need it, though. Playing towards Connector now. Maybe going for that fast peak or fast kill towards mid. Looking like Barrage won't give it up. Four players towards B apps. B contact. Looking like it's on the cards. And actually, that smoke and flash towards mid pulls out that rotation from B short. They could go for a contact B now if they... Oh, he dropped the bomb. Does that give a sound cue? I don't think the CT's heard it, so... Bomb was dropped towards apps. Fortunately, those dropped too far back. The CT's don't hear that. Now the push comes. They spot it. Yeah, Samuel has the information, gets to use that Molotov, which is going to be absolutely crucial in terms of early damage and also just allowing Samuel to try and play around his lip, but Wong isn't quite going to give it up. Eventually, his head is going to be found, though. Neto now looking to find himself that quick tray, but he isn't going to have the vision on where Samuel is hiding as he dances around the pillar, looking to really pull off the tango at this point. But look at Nuki coming in from behind now. He's in market, finds himself just one for his troubles. Neto still fighting to respond, but it's going to be a two versus four. Nuki just another in towards Shanked, nailing him in the coffin. And, well, Shanked is just going to end it all as he burns away his teammate. Yeah, Nuki there making the right play. You see many other Orpers play very passive towards Kitchen. They're so scared to push out onto site. Nuki finds the first frag, jumps out of the door there. Goes towards Rattlesnake and peeks towards Balcony. It's very rare you see other Orpers go for that. Uh, just because many of the Orpers, they want to play Kitchen, they want to play for retake, they want to play nice and safe. But, uh, I mean, fair enough, it was a 4 vs 2, could have died there and potentially gave the round up. But if that was a 4 vs 4 and there was more of those T players alive, that was definitely the right play for him to make there. So, uh, good aggressive showing there from Nuki. Even though he hasn't really been showing it towards mid, he does show it there towards the B bomb site. Still, though, another buy from the CT side. Mag 7 or somewhere towards B, so the Mag 7 is in play towards somewhere where it can be utilized properly. And again, the money is still fairly low on Impulse Gaming side if they lose this round. Barrage could potentially go 7 4 up. Wong near the first, making it 5 versus 4. Samuel just holding up so patiently over towards the B site, but that's not where the action is. He's just having to almost well, said, okay, and perhaps I need to get on this quick action rotate, but a shotgun in that sort of circumstance always going to be rough as Cynic's toying with the idea of going aggressive is going to get that pick and shut down Wong, which actually is a pretty big impact frag in itself. Sort of really just minimalizing what that AWP can do in the kind of latter end of the round. 
But then there's the problem and the tough reality that the CT side are still losing all of their manpower no matter what they think. Samuel, he's the only guy left. He is their final pillar, the final frontier. And he's only got an AWP either, which, yes, he can hold for these picks. He can look for these shots. But where does that, where does, where's the resolution in that snods? That there isn't much clutch potential for him. It's all about you know, staying alive at this point. And he's yep. going to play right into the hands of Peto. He picks him up and Barrage really upping their game, if I'm honest. It does feel mm -hmm. like they really are just countering it. And there's a very valid point that has been made, which is, well, Barrage just going super aggressive and super almost with the attitude of, you know, hold my beer for me, mate, for a second. I've got this as they just charge on forward at every single angle and hitting all the shots. Yeah, you mentioned what can someone do there with the AWP, and the thing is, you can go for exit frags, but look at the money on the T side. 11,000 there on Velox. 6,000 to other players as well, so it's not as if you can do economic damage there. <laughs> Nook you through the smoke. Fair play, mate. Fair play. Do it on lamp. 6th of February. But uh, as I mentioned there, the money is still so strong on Barrage's side. Velox there killing Nuki will make it 4 versus 4. Imports Gaming, I mentioned before, they have very strong CT sides, especially versus Kaz, is how they took it previously. Strong CT sides and weak T sides versus Enemies of Disbelief. When I first watched them play, they had four rounds on their T side and uh, they looked very shaky. So the fact they've only got four rounds here and we're on the 11th one right now and it's looking like it's going to go 7-4. This is looking very worrying if you are an Impulse fan. For sure, of course, at least they're able to do a little bit with these pistols and, well, Try and perhaps push in on towards this B site. But Velox eventually looking to get this plant. And once he does that, I think hopes does rapidly you know, begin to dwindle. They are just going to be holding yet again for these exit frags. And I think the pistols, you know, they, they're great. And it's kind of a you know, what you've got at the end of the day. You have to try and you know, fuse what you've got in your armory. But it's not really a positive point, is it? I think I'm looking at kind of a 10 5 at this point. Hopefully a 9 6, but getting bleaker and bleaker by the second. And I kind of do want to ask you, we've really been stressing on them not playing any defaults and doing something different and perhaps trying to counter the quick-paced confidence from Barrage, but what does that actually mean? Where's the end goal for them and what do they change, Lance? What do they change? Well, I mean, the thing that's happened so far this game is the fact that Barrage keep resetting the money of Impulse. Impulse win around it, they lose it instantly and they're losing it based off stupid plays. Wong finding two frags there from Palace with an AWP. That's just not acceptable. If the first player dies... That's fair enough, right? For me once, for me twice. Twice there. Nookie finds a kill through the smoke towards mid. Barrage, they went for that same contact A approach I mentioned before, and I mentioned it wasn't really the best call sometimes. When the CTs have utility and the counternades to back it up, but no counternades there, just aim. They managed to hold off the push hit from Barrage. Nookie there, the second for himself this round. Wong in the one versus three. Yeah, it's that repetition that's come back to haunt them this time around. Barrage, you know, you may well be hitting these shots, but if you do do the same thing over and over again, eventually, you know, it does become a bit easier for Impulse to handle it, which is exactly what they've done this time around, right? Nuki getting the double kill with the AWP Wong. Going to try and keep it competitive, you know, in the immediate future, at least, as he does find the pick on towards Samuel. But Nuki tots it up with a triple kill for him all in all in that round and walks away happy as ever as he struts his stuff. But what I want to kind of touch on off the back of that is that, okay, so Barrage know that they can't necessarily go for this same old A push. But, but they, are they going to be able to just keep on going with these one-hit wonders and just still ply on through? Or are we starting to see Barrage have to withdraw from this kind of mechanism of just pushing everything and actually play to a standard T-side? Well, I actually like what they're doing right now. Going for the contact B play. And actually, Samuel, they have no needs. Just a FAMAS. We'll go one for one, and that's really not what you want. Neto getting the trade frag there, staying at full HP. And Samuel is 13 HP with zero utility and just a FAMAS to his name. We will have Nuki though rotate towards Kitchen and hold his B-apps though. At the end of the world, then again Barrage, they should be expecting the rotation here and they can go back towards underpass, go back towards mid and go for an A split here, anticipating a heavy stack towards B. Or even a split defense here, 2-2 CT set up now for Impulse. Definitely an exploitable mid here, but you can see Nuki starting to move, starting to get a bit fishy here, thinking, getting a bit weird here, no steps towards B, nothing. I believe that's Neto there, pushing towards B, trying to keep yeah, Nuki staying towards B, and the bomb is going towards A. And you can see now as well, Sonny John, he's starting to leave ramp and going towards stairs. This could end very badly for Impulse. I actually like this, you know, from Impulse though, overall. As much as it may be bad in terms of the rotations and the kind of ladder read they've got, bear in mind that Barrage, you know, aren't necessarily just going bulls at all, rushing everything 24-7. We've gone back to a standard T-side default almost now where they're trying to work these angles. You know, look at Veloc's style of play. He's just going to try and work their way out through ramp. Nice and tactical, actually, and much more kind of what you'd expect from a standard T-side. 
it does make things a little bit harder for them to handle and make things prone to a CT side getting these picks. But at the same time, leaves you a window of opportunity. Jammy is popping off right now. He's finding himself a return frag left, right, and center. Samuel holding in towards connector, but just as we kind of talked about, once Impos get Barrage to play the way they want them, the way they want them to, should I say, Impos still feel like they have the upper hand even when it seems pretty bleak. Because the way you, we kind of talked about that round and the way you portrayed their rotates made the pitch look pretty kind of dark and dangerous for the CT side. Yep. But when you kind of analyze the way they're playing and you go back to the comps we made right at the start, then that kind of yet again is another role reversal. Yep, Cynic Sean playing towards Sandwich there. They did not expect a player to be there that late into the round. He got that frag, he kept the attention of Neto. That allowed Jammy from underneath the balcony to swing wide, take Neto down, go up on top of the balcony, and then have, you know, ring around the road to that player. And actually, Samuel finding two flanks there towards the B site. Nuki and Cynic John chime in too. We're potentially looking at 7-7, and the money on the T side is very, very bleak. So, could definitely be 8-7, but is 8-7 enough? But to mention that previous round, yeah. Barrage getting very strange with the rotates. The bomb went back towards B for a second there in T-spawn, then it went back towards A. You had uh, a player going towards B trying to keep keep the rotation at work, but I just don't think Barrage played it fast enough. And Veloc's here <laughs> finding two very quick headshots. But at this point, I think he needs to save, really. But the problem is he can't at 2 HP and being trapped as well from these players. Would have to be a huge blunder here from Impulse to give up this round. Yeah, I think he has no choice but to play for this round, right? The problem with that is Jamie's angle. He's holding it nice and precariously, just looking up onto us that exit and Ooh. the minute he peeks is the minute he ends and we get to see a pause here which is actually pretty interesting and I, and I like it off the back of that right because you wouldn't expect to see a pause in the final round so i'm certainly leaning towards this being a, a, of a technical nature but if it's of a tactical nature yeah into that, that could be okay. different but it is, it is going to be technical so as expected there's nothing kind of next level snuds we can we can breathe for a second but hey it does help us right and it does give you an opportunity to kind of lay into us on what's going on why we're at a seven seven and one of the big things is, you know, who gets the most value right now of taking this to 8-7? Because yes, you have your standard CS meta where you'd kind of want to see, you know, that favoured CT side perhaps try and edge it ahead and get themselves that further for more rounds. But in the context of these two teams, who does it favour? Well, I mean, context, speaking just on context, Impulse Gaming typically are very strong on the CT side. I've mentioned that a billion times, so I'm not going to go over that again. What I'm going to go over is the fact that Impulse won the pistol round and they got the three, the two subsequent rounds, follow, rounds uh, following that. Three rounds just off the precipice of the pistol means that in terms of gun rounds, Barrage hit sitting very comfortable at seven and Impulse on four. To Impulse Gaming on their T side, they're going to need that pistol if they want a chance of taking it. Neto going one for one, that's what you want on your T side. This allows the T players to push out and actually shank there throwing that molly. I mean, Snake John is alone towards Palace. And now, oh, look at them all funneled, though. This could end very badly for Barrage. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. Once they get kind of forced into having to do you, what is a bit of a half fast they execute. This guy get through the it's smoke? Just, well, it's just a shooting range for them at this point. He's more than happy just to keep on tapping, right? Peto almost certainly should have been able to find that with the Tech 9, but he falls rather short on. It's just a very bland storyline for Barrage. The huge turning point was. Once Impulse Gaming were able to adapt and actually change away from just playing defaults, then they started to improve, and then they started to charge on ahead and they get that 8-7 on their CT side. So at least we get one thing to say, which, as you mentioned, the CT side is where you kind of expect them to go huge. But now we get the swap. Now Impulse have to play that T side, and I don't necessarily think it's going to be as aggressive and as confident <laughs> as Barrage have been, but at the same time, I do want to see kind of mid-control. I do want to see some actual short smokes and flashes like that because I think that was another weak point for Barrage where they were going aggressive quite a lot but they actually didn't really use a whole lot of flashes. Um, sorry just to complete off tangent. Have you seen that clip of Rattlesnake um, in a source tournament versus a Finnish team where he kept getting killed through a smoke and his reaction? I haven't though but I'm guessing I know where you How many times can that guy keep Oh I can't swear on stream can I? Let's just put it this way. Nuki right now hitting all these crazy... I believe he's got, what, three kills through a smoke already and one half, two with an orb through a smoke. And then one, he body tagged someone through the mid smoke, you know, across mid, twice. It wasn't a headshot through the smoke, it was two body shots through the mid smoke. So, uh, great mental play coming from Nuki, 16 kills for him. And uh, leading into this T side, they're definitely going to be needing that. Whatever Nuki has, they're going to be needing it because Barrage here. If they take this pistol, this could go 10-8, and at that point, I'm really favoring Barrage. When initially, I thought Impulse would be taking it away on their CT side. 
But in terms of pistols, a very strange one here. Five players towards ramp. No one going towards palace. But this could work as there's a mid push from Barrage. Yeah, we do see this a lot from the Impulse Boys, though, and actually worked against Kaz, I believe. So, you know, I'm not going to doubt it. They get that nade dunk on towards Pedo, which already is that first pick, and they see a lot of value in their utility usage as a lineup. So, that's certainly showing, but Velox playing right on the cusp of that smoke does get himself one in return. So, brings it back to a four versus four. A healthy standpoint for a CT side, but notice how they're all pushing from one pretty much funnel point, which gives the information all to the terrorists now as they look to completely flank them in from all of these angles, and it is just a chicken shoot for them. Oh, Nuki going to cut them all down, a triple kill for him. Cynic finding one of his own on towards. Velox, easy as ever, and the big thing about that strategy, right, is they use that nade to get that first pick, which you know is something we've seen them do a fair bit in practice at least. After they get that first pick, then charge in towards CT, they get jungle as well, and they have all of this control, which means that the minute we see Barrage actually push in through connector, they get themselves to that kind of middle portion of the site, I guess you can say, just opposite sandwich. Yeah. Then they just strangle them because it, Barrage, where do they look on that? Do they fight jungle? Do they fight CT? Or do they fight ramp? It's actually my but I got the teams mixed up there. I thought Barrage was on the T side for some reason. But um very strange pistol there. Three players pushing top mid. Um I don't know how I feel about that. You isolate the player towards A, and what happens? They go, as you mentioned before, towards CT. And at that point it's very hard for you to win that round rotating in from connector. As uh, Nuki proved there. As all those CTs they rotated in, but Nuki towards jungle. It's almost as if the roles were reversed, you know. Usually you see the the uh C T player of the USP watching that cross, but instead it was the Glock in hand for Nikki. Both pistols as well going in favor of Impulse. And uh, that gives you a very high chance of taking a best of one. If Impulse can get another two rounds as they did previously, we could be seeing six rounds just based off of the fact of the pistol round wins. Plus Flash goes in. They have control of the B apps and B apartments. Now they shall push B. Looking for these early shots, going very, very up close and personal with these SMGs, and kind of like that, it really does play into their hands. Samuel with a longer battle is over towards mid as he finds one in return, looking to really bat this one home now as he finds himself a triple kill, just pretty much batting out of the park. Velox to 69 HP is the last man standing with a scout, and well, that's really all he's going to be doing, filling the role of a scout. He's going to get all of the information and then go try and report it back to his team, but little does he know when he arrives back, Oh, well, he's just going to find them all dead on the floor. So pretty bleak ending for him. And unfortunately, sad scenes overall for the Barrage side when it comes down to the first couple of rounds in the second half. But it's not over yet, just yet, Snod, is it? It's still a couple of bar rounds away. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing, seeing what Barrage can do when they get onto their buy rounds. But the immediate future still just dictates pistols. Yeah, we'll be seeing the Felico here. Impulse getting to 11. And now this is starting to shape up like... The predictions we had previously, 16-10 or 16-9, where Barrage, if they lose the first gun round here, and it goes to 13-7, at that point it really is almost sealed in the deal there for Impulse Gaming. <sighs> Barrage going again towards mid of their pistol, but without a flashbang, you're not going to win the upfront Angel with, you know, no armor and a USP. You need a flashbang, have three players grouped towards connector, have that player go window, pop flash mid, or pop flash over the top of connector and peek like that instead of just, you know, walking to your death like a slaughterhouse. But, one on the AWP actually. Wow. I did not expect that. I mean, I know it's AWPing T side, but uh, definitely interesting to see one AWPing on the CT side as well. Is he going towards a mid? I can't see my res is too low. Can you see if he's towards mid right now on the radar? Yeah, he's, he's actually sitting dead set in mid window, staring wow. right towards the eyes of Cynic. He's almost got his cross uh, lined up on his forehead, searching for that shot, but unfortunately he's been given no room to breathe at all just yet. Nothing is facing him, and Velox is bearing down towards underpass as well. So I do like this from Barrage. It's a lot more presence towards mid, right? So they've tried to almost run with the idea of you know, patching the holes in their sinking ship. But Impulse, they're just going to hit somewhere else. They've decided, you know what? Okay, we've used mid. We've used and abused it. That, that's over now. Let's just perhaps try and work A, which you know we've seen the early presence come in from Nuki. And Samwell, they've got a little bit of jammy over towards B as well. And they're all just acting as these feelers. They're all seeing, okay, you know, who's going to nibble at this? Who's going to bite on a way in where they get the most kind of reception? They're actually going to go to the opposite direction. So they've got a lot of shots coming from Peso. So they've decided, actually, you know what? The best chance for us is an A execute. Mm -hmm. Why not, X. to be honest? Well, the problem is, though, Barrage, look at the way they're playing towards stairs and towards CT. They are playing retake, so good read here. But the problem is they do not have the nades sufficient enough for a retake. And you will see that player push towards triple boxes. 
Tank just going to hold this angle, and that is beautiful play from him because he gets that first pick. Unfortunately, unable to find a second, though. Samuel is going to respond and look at Wong through the smoke like a madman as he cuts down Ray Velks, trying to find himself just another run towards Samuel. Almost like a knife slicing through Warm Butter. They make it through the other side. Cynic going to push on towards stairs, gets to punish Velks nice and easy. Nuki backward to respond on towards Wong. And Nuki is just making sweet, sweet work with the Barrage Boys. I think this yeah, is an individual mental, highlight. He? he is the MVP of this first map by far. 25 to 9. 25 to 9. Wow. Yeah. Very stellar performance here from Nuki. I mean, I, I said he was the star of this team, but it feels like he is definitely a caliber above the rest of his teammates. How long until we see Nuki go into one of these tier 1 UGA teams, top 3 teams, because... Um, there's people watching him right now. He's definitely hitting some very, very, uh, I don't want to say fishy shots, but very crisp shots, right? Very good in the after part as well. Very good at, um, oh, I think one of the weaknesses is the fact that towards the early portion of the map, he plays very passive. Like right now, just holding. That's not, that's not you know, a bad thing, especially when they're playing versus pistols. But uh, on their CT side, he didn't really have much impact at the start of the round. We didn't see him going towards Palace for the peaks. We didn't see him going towards B-Apps and pushing B-Apps. He went mid-window, connected every single round, and he held for the short push every round. So um, that's the only you know thing I can critique about him. In his retakes, he's playing very well. In his afterplants, he's playing very well. In his pistol and rifle rounds, he's got good aim. A very diverse player and a very strong player at that. So definitely going to be seeing a lot more of Nuki. Nuki, sorry going forward and um yeah where is he from again he's from same place as dom and hype that's lithuania right yeah i believe it's lithuania if, yeah, if, he's, so. if he's from the same place as dom and hype then it is lithuania. yeah yeah he's from... fun fact fun fact about um ooh, how long ago was it about six months ago dom told me this uh he was meant to be on a team with nuki actually and uh, back then nuki had a different name as well but uh for some reason nuki went to play some lithuanians they're going to form a lithuanian team but uh, Dom went to go play UKCS, and then Nuki went to play Lithuanian. Nuki had a different name back then. He changed his name, and now he's playing in UKCS. So, um, bit of history there from the player. Would have been nice to see Dom, a rising talent, and Nuki as well. Definitely another rising star. So, that could have been quite a prevalent team. Yeah, and I think Nuki's rise really is going to be quite prevalent now. I'm expecting the next couple of months to be really solid for him, providing he can kind of hold it together and keep putting up these same kind of level of performances. But... Nonetheless, let's bring it back to the action at hand because we've lost over the pistols, which is rightly so. It's always going to be the fair position. But Barrage, they're back on a buy and they're starting off strong. Velox digs out a foothold, the trench that is underpass as he finds that initial pick on towards Samwell. Jammy is still somewhat alive, but 12 HP, well, depends on your definition, is still standing. But he does get to bite into connector off the back of a very well placed pop flash. And that gives him the frag on towards Velox, leaving Neto now kind of with a whole lot to clean up towards short. But he's in a crossfire as well towards connector so if that push comes in we can expect to see trades back and forth but it will favor the ct side which is why impulse have withdrawn from the situation they know what's up they've got the read but the concern for them is they've only got 50 seconds on the clock now to make those readjustments in mid well that's surely not going to be a worthwhile avenue for them now velox there overstaying his welcome you see config play connector as well but it always smokes out as soon as the smoke fades he pulls back Velox getting caught, and Nuki might find this player towards stairs as well. Hits the flick shot. Wong falls, opening towards a bomb site. But the problem is Neto is here. Towards the shot, taps down, and the bomb is down as well. 25 seconds on the clock, so this bomb has to move fast. It needs to get planted. There's only one player towards the a bomb site. All he has to do is drop the bomb, though, and he's going to line them it. both up. Gets himself a double oh, kill. Goes Shank. for the triple, and he takes it all home for the team. A triple kill from Shank. A huge performance from him. And that is right there, a huge lesson in Counter-Strike to everyone at home watching right now, Snoz, because it comes down to patience. You sit tight, you rely on your team's communication, you rely on that network of your team. Just, just sit there and hold it together, and then when things fall into place, you're there to do your job. And for him, that was getting that 3k, and he does it absolutely perfectly. And it gives them at least something to play with, a fighting chance now to bring this one back, as they have got an interesting composition on their buy. An Org for Wong. Clearly a fan of the uh, the different weapons, should we say. I think he's where to sign hey, one of these. But you know what? If it works, it works. Is he mid again as well with an Org? Yeah, he is. There he is. is. With the scope. Oh, look at Shank though. He's doing the work over towards round. The double kill for him. Oh, and another my. triple. Dropping this by round completely off the face of the earth. As Velox's going to just help him out by covering up his shadow. And then Shank's going to go even further aggressive on towards ramp. And well, here's a fact of the day for you, Snow. It's just another to add to that one. 
Didn't know Barrage Esports CT side was pretty much their T side. Shanked, the first half had four or five kills. And it's already paid more than that. Two rounds on his CT side. Shanked, he's got good aim. Um, I want to say it's more like a cement. Oh, okay. Chill, 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 chill. But uh, not cement, what's the word I'm looking for? I like the he's cement the anchor right now. Yeah, anchor, that's together. the word I'm thinking of. Yeah, on, on his T side, he's not very mobile. Um, doesn't quite get a lot of work done, but on his CT side, you put him in a spot and he will hold that spot until the cows come home. And uh, he got a 3k in the first round and a 4k there, that one. Seven frags, it's more kills than he had in the first half of his T side. Wong with the AWP, changing it up now, going towards connector. Smart play there as he was getting caught towards mid window. Three versus five, this is the eco though from Impulse Gaming. This will make it 13 10. Money. On the side of Barrage, if they can keep as many players alive as possible, they definitely have a fighting chance to take this. Nuki as well towards Window got boosted here, I believe. If one of those players towards B shot walk into his crosshair, they could get their face torn off. Could get their face torn off, but I think I'm looking at almost, you know, long ever to eat yet again. And unfortunately, it's not, I'm, I'm not quite a believer. And well, there you have it. It is going to be all looking nails just crushing onto the body to impost gaming. They aren't able to achieve anything at all with these pistols, you know. As almost you could say standard. That means that we do have some more time bought for Barrage. They are going to lose their coach in the process. Para deciding, you know what? <laughs> I'm out of this, boys. It's all good. I'm just going to I'm gonna leave now. Yeah, I'm dipping. But yeah, I kind of want to go back to the scoreboard actually and kind of reference that right now. Because we saw five rounds in a row for Impulse Gaming, including that pissed round on the second half. Barrage finally starting to wake up and they get themselves this the previous three that we've seen. But this is about them building up a big stint. And a big part of that is going to be Shanks. And he goes aggressive in this round, and what a great start. Gets that pick on towards Jammy. Yeah, very well played there. Double push towards B, and they've already got players on site. The problem is Nexus caught off guard, but towards under balcony. Velox finds two frags. Shanked as well from Palace finds another one. Wong through the smoke will find that final kill. I mentioned it before. Impulse Gaming on their T side. It's, I don't want to say it's a mess, but it's definitely very different from their CT side. 13 rounds, though. How did they get there? They won both pistols, that's six. They won the first rifle round. That gave them the, what is it, 12th round, and then obviously versus the eco, they did find the 13th. But Barrage, as soon as they had their foot in the door with their rifles, they are managing to claw this one back slowly, and now it's impulse on eco, and not Barrage. Velox and Wong, good hold here towards mid net as well pushes. Four players staying alive, I hope anyway. Yep, Shanky still the deal. Four players staying alive. The money and the bank is building. 15k now on Prezi. Prezi, well, oh, his name's Petto right now. But uh, Prezi being the IGL for this team. Definitely showing some strong prowess on the CT side. You met, you well, I don't say you mentioned, but uh, they play towards the B app. So the uh, A apartments there. You've got a UMP and a rifle and a lack of utility. And they abuse that by having the push towards Palace. Even if they go one for one there. As long as they control that portion of the map and they don't give it up and they have the map control, that's worth it in their eyes. And Nuki finding the opening towards B. The problem is he hasn't quite got the teammates to back him up yet. Can he get any more? Almost hits that flick. You know what? He doesn't need oh, them though. It's not. He's on his own. He's a one-man army. A Swiss army knife. Dropping them all dead as he gets himself that initial double kill. Nesso is going to find himself on a bit of a, a higher top pinnacle as he finds himself one back on towards Cynic. But the numbers still favor this T side. They're still on the site as well. And it means that they have to go for a two-pronged attack. Marketplace and short. Now, on paper, that's a pretty solid retake, right? They're going to do some damage with some frag grenades. It's only a scraping, but damage is damage at the end of the day. And they're going to look for Shank to get that pick on towards Nuki. But it's all but tagging. But Nuki's going to face on wide. And that gives Samwell an opportunity to find one of his own as well. They're trading a fair rate, placing close. He peeks back out on towards Shank. And this is madness. But yet again, it's still favoring one team, Impulse Gaming. They've been struggling to win the buys. I would say that Barrage have been winning actually more buy rounds all in all when you exclude the pistol rounds. But when it comes down to this circumstance, Impulse Gaming holding this site, Barrage can't even get close. Velox, he's the last man remaining, has a flash dropped at his feet, is going to dodge it, and that enables him to at least find one frag on towards Ray, but, well, it is just that one frag, not a round win. Barrage, they started to build up a very healthy stint in their comeback. I think it was, you know, a pretty, what, and, uh, yeah, five rounds in a row, so identical to Impulse Gaming start, and Barrage didn't even have that pistol. The difference is Impulse Gaming now have shut them down. They've pushed them back and said, you know what? We're still here. We can still do work on these buy rounds after all. Yeah, and talk about buy rounds. If Barrage can take this one, the money on Impulse's side. Only one playing staying alive there, making it a very costly investment. Money very low. 
And they've already got the one-man lead as well. The Wong finds that kill towards mid. A lot of pressure here. Barrage take this. 13-14 impulse on another eco. This is going to go to 14-14 right down to the wire. And at 14-14 it's anyone's game. And this, <laughs> well, if it goes to 14-14, Barrage having a much stronger CT side. I reckon this could definitely end 16-14 in favour of Barrage. But they need to close out this round. They've got the man lead. Don't play, don't play aggressive. Don't play anxious where you don't need to. Mirage is a map where you can have good retakes. You don't need to play for information here. You don't need to give away your life. It's okay to play retake. And Shangtae playing passive will have someone walk into his crosshair. Wong taking a whole lot of damage in the process though. It's not down to just 12 HP, but... You mentioned a very, very key point, which is Barrage right now, they've extenuated the control on towards the side of Impulse Gaming. They've really got them kind of almost playing like a puppet. They've got that one-man advantage. They've well and truly forced them into B apps. And the aggression from Peto is going to be absolutely key. Is he going to screw this up and not get a single pick, or is he going to mow them all down? Because he has very serious potential to, to pretty much end this round. Bear in mind, they're leading it with an AWP because they're expecting to be able to peek that long hallway that is B Apartments. And that actually oh. very much favors Peto. They're going to walk right into the get one, make that to two. Doesn't quite get the third, but arguably two is just enough. As with 20 seconds on the clock, a three versus one. Ray's hope and dreams. Well, it about go as far as a bomb plant. Yeah, the bomb is going to make a massive difference here, though. The bomb is very important. That can make the difference between winning your eco and winning it. Oh, and losing it, sorry. Ray one that finds the first. It's definitely winnable. Now they like them! Kind of close. <laughs> yeah, money, though, on Barrage's side. They're fine with it being one man last alive. When this defuse comes in, they'll get 3.5k. They're balling. They're rolling in it. So, um, Impost, their bomb goes down. Look at the money difference there. 2k, 6k on Samuel. Samuel can drop tech nines. You've got armor, utility. You can go for a fast B split. Um, you can go for smoke towards A. Playing A execute. The problem is you're not going to really win that after plant with just tech nines. But your best bet is probably going towards B. Um, maybe a B split towards short. Smoke off connector, smoke off top mid. Or smoke off short, sorry. And try and burst towards B. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, right? It's all about that you know, pop effect right now that you can have with these tech things where you can just appear. But you've got Wong with the AWP, and he's just not missing. Even with smokes, Neto now going to go aggressive off the back of that. Use that misplay smoke on towards short to get himself just another. And all oh, that popping effect of the pistols has well and truly been dropped on there. They do get that advantage over towards B in terms of crossing on through apartments, but they're still player on short. He's doing so much damage. Ray is well, trying to make something work, but... Almost scraping at the bottom of the barrel at this point. As Barrage get that equalization point 14-14. And you said yep. if we got here, it'd be going to Barrage. And I can't help but agree with you because it does feel like Barrage have had the better CT side. Wait, it comes down orb? to pure buy rounds. Was that and a there is an orb on the side of one. No, no, no. There's no orb on Nikki. Uh, Samuel had 6k. Oh, no. They could be going for five rifles, bear in mind. Could be I a mean, decision. With five rifles, you're going to go, what, execute A? Execute towards mid? The problem is, look... They've got all the players towards mid and B apps. They're going to go for a contact B play. It's all down to Nookie here with the AK. What's the jump spot? Information's given though. Actually, did they see that player? Nookie's still pushing. He's on 50, sorry, 47 HP. I think the problem is Nookie right now, you look at the scoreboard and Nookie in his head's thinking, come on guys, I need to carry this. My team up's stepping up. It's all down to me. I have to be the player to make this happen. And I feel like, I don't want to say it's getting to him, but he's pushing it too hard. And um, if he dies here, wait, why? Just why? You don't have to get double entry again towards B. You have the nades utility, have the trust in the system, trust your teammates. Nikki there, throwing away his life once again. He's throwing peak towards mid when it was 14-12, trying to make the play. And the star player here could eventually be the catalyst to impulse losing this 16-14. It's such a shame, and you mentioned kind of a very a key fact yet again, and it's all about that kind of well, reminiscent feeling of previous rounds, because it feels like we've we've crossed this bridge, where Impulse Gaming have been in a situation where Nuki's tried to go huge, and at times it's worked out of him with the AWP, but there comes a point where there's only so much you can do as just one man. He needs his team to play around him, but there's also that fact about playing around the system and trusting in the mechanism that holds your team together, and Something that Barrage really have done a whole lot better. And well, Shanks has been playing absolutely on point. He's starting to really rival the likes of Nuki. And to be honest, that outcome off the back of that initial loss well, all kind of just felt a bit standard. It didn't really feel yeah. like there was anything different. It's just Barrage getting the easy put, easy picks when Impulse pushed them. None of the flashes really blinded the CT side either. So they literally just held their angles and waited. 
what more could Barrage ask for? And kind of, well, Impulse Gaming really starting to fall off short. And well, now you look at it and go, four Tech Nines, a UMP. This is one hell of, well, a last hope, a last stand. Yeah. Whatever else you want to call it. One thing it certainly isn't. It's pretty. Yeah, you ask what can they ask for? They, <laughs> they better hope Nookie keeps throwing away his life here. Had such a stellar performance up until these final crucial rounds where he feels the pressure and he wants to put everything on his back, right? He's playing like Kenny S. When Kenny S is on Envious right now, he plays to carry. But sometimes he does play in the favor of the other team. Ray one, though, fighting the first. And finally, we see Barrage with the opening kill and the man advantage. Can Impulse capitalize off of this? Nuki has an AWP as well. Look at Velox's position, though. He's, they're pretty much holding on their sights at this point. That's Barrage's game plan. They're not necessarily too fussed about mid control. Their reliance is all on this site. Neto grenade, portal guide by Cynic. That's a flank kill and a half. Shank, though, trying to do the work. His teammate Velox is going to hold him down, stop him from falling, which means that that CT side angle of the A site is well and truly in place. That bomb has been dropped 45 seconds on the clock, and now Shank gets to do even more work because he's kind of just bordering between facing CT on towards the A site and moving back in towards CT as well and just covering off his behind us. Then he has to decide, okay, do I want to do anything with stairs? Nuki trying to rival that angle yet again with the AWP, but, well, you talked about him having to go huge. This is almost impossible at this point. They have so many angles to check. And Cynic with the rifle isn't actually pushing close at all, which kind of bears into this crossfire. They need to check close. Shanks is going to find one. Nuki going to miss the shot. And, well, there you have it. The nail in the coffin. Barrage Esports take it 16 to 14.